Hey everybody and um, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well today and today I thought I would react to and talk about the e-petition on the UK government that was live yesterday at Westminster Hall. The petition numbers are 589677 and 597840. They were e-petitions which were assessments for autism and ADHD and basically as an autistic woman I thought it would be good to talk about this. I'm going to link the petition and the live debate down in the video description down below so you can watch it for yourself. So I thought as an autistic woman I would talk you through it and what I liked about it and what I thought could have been mentioned. So let's get into it. The e-petition numbers 589677 and 597840 were e-petitions for assessments for autism and ADHD. The petitions reached over 21,000 signatures and they were basically talking about emergency funding for autism and ADHD assessments within the local NHS here in the UK. If you don't know what the NHS stands for, it stands for the National Health Service and how they are managed by the NHS. The ADHD petition, which I believe is the 597840 uh, number petition, received just over 10,000 signatures. So it shows that it is vital for autism and ADHD services to be improved and for the amount of assessments that need to be happening in the UK need to be more often, more frequent, and there needs to be more people being diagnosed because apparently there is a current 18 months to two and a half to four year backlog due to the pandemic issue so unfortunately there is a lot of people still waiting to get diagnosed assessed and the aftercare support so waiting times are currently a minimum of 18 months to two years it is two years too long for families to wait for an assessment I can understand what this must be like for families who are going through an assessment for autism or ADHD because I went through it myself my assessment from start to finish was just nearly three years. So I can understand the frustration, not just physically and emotionally, but mentally, because you go through all the mental health thoughts, feelings, you go through all the high anxieties, the high emotions, the losing of friendships, you kind of become isolated, you feel nervous about even communicating with people in your social circle or your school circle or your college circle, or if you're in the workplace, if you're wet, waiting and your work colleagues may think that there's something different about you but they're not kind of sure what it is or how to approach you about it then you know it basically causes a bit of a barrier the uk workplaces are also lacking neurodiverse people and it's due to employers not understanding or realizing the potential of people who are neurodivergent or have neurodiverse conditions such as autism, such as ADHD, who may be still waiting. And the thing is, workplaces are very limited. I know that they have a lot of time restrictions and they have to have people in their workplaces get the job done by the end of the day. But if you have a neurodivergent person or a neurodiverse person that you know of in your workplace, they are going to be fantastic people. They're going to be loyal. They're going to be honest. They're going to be trustworthy. They're going to be on time all the time. They're going to dress well because they know how important it is to be in the workplace and be professional. They know how important it is to get the job done on structure, on routine, get each job that you give them each chore done to the best of their ability because they know if they don't get it done, they're going to feel bad for not completing the tasks that they've been set during the working day. Also, I understand how important it is to get help and support for children and young people who may be waiting for both an autism and ADHD assessment. It is a very crucial time of their lives, especially between the ages of 8 to say 15, 16 of years of age, because that is the most challenging time of your life. You're going through primary school, you're going through GCSEs, you're going through friendship circles, you know, you're having to self-discover yourself and what it means to be an adult or a child and being different, you know. It can be a very crucial time in their life not understanding why their behaviour is different, why they're isolated, why they don't get on with people, why they're struggling to catch up with schoolwork, why they may be called challenging or special needs, which I hate that word. I hate that technicality, but it is unfortunately a term used within the SENS community, the disability community, the autistic community, and especially the ADHD community that I'm aware of. 
So, you know, it does cause a lot of problems within the first few years of their life. If they don't have an autism or ADHD assessment, it can cause extreme mental health issues with schooling. It can cause them to be temporarily suspended or worse, expelled and not told to come back. So again, that causes problems within the education system. This is my next point that they talked about here. The education system and the local community need much more awareness raising of autism and both ADHD because again, local authorities only get so much time, funding and allowance to spend with people with both autism or suspected ADHD and you know, they're not given enough time to proper research their background or how to support that person, you know. Someone with autism or ADHD may not be obvious on the outside, they may look as normal like I am and be able to be verbal as much as I am, but at the same point you may see little triggers like heightened anxiety, heightened depression, heightened sensory differences, not being able to communicate as well, maybe needing alternative communication needs like PEX cards or um, direct questions, things like that, that may make their communication a bit more off key than what my communication is at the current time. Also, they may have heightened more anxiety, they may have other mental health issues lurking in the background, there could be other things such as a borderline personality or bipolar disorder that is underdiagnosed or hasn't been treated or assessed. So, again, that could be something that's triggering their autism or ADHD suspected symptoms or their, what they think they have wrong with them. I also agree it's down to local authority needs, including training. Again, the local authority in each area is different. I know in Suffolk, where I'm from, the UK, the lack of training is a big issue. It's been a big issue for a few years now, and I have tried raising this with my local MP, with my local councillors, with local government when I've gone to meetings and the problem is it's down to time, it's down to money and they don't see it as a headstrong priority and that really does irritate me somewhat because when you're struggling and you're trying to fight the corner for other autistic and ADHD people or people with mental health issues, it just seems that you're batting your head against a brick wall. It's like, oh well, I'm pushing this way and this way and this way and this way and nothing ever seems to get done. I know that we had the Autism Act of 2009 and 2010, which were implicated by the UK government, which were a fantastic resource for their time, but unfortunately, then that was replaced by the Think Autism Act of 2014, which hasn't been updated. And I think we need to make a combined autism and ADHD strategy for the UK government as a whole, for the UK politics as a whole. And I think that UK autism and ADHD strategy should be implemented across the UK. The one, no matter where you are, if you're in Scotland, Ireland, Wales, anywhere else in the UK that may have an autism or ADHD service. And I think that implication of that service, that implication of that strategy will help you to better assess the needs of people who may have complex needs waiting for an autism or an ADHD assessment or referral because I know the referrals are taking a long time to come through because there is the COVID pandemic backlog that now every single NHS trust in the country is trying to get through and I know with my autism service here in UK it is a currently a two and a half to three year backlog because of obviously not being able to see people face to face everything was then switched online and I know a lot of people with autism or suspected ADHD or suspected autism uh, do not cope with being online phone calls, online assessments, because I think, again, you do miss out crucial information by doing that online. I think doing online assessments is completely dangerous because, again, you don't have that medical facility. You're only seeing people on a video call, face to face, talking about their symptoms, their behaviour, their medical history, which leads up to the suspected autism or suspected ADHD process and I think again that can be completely dangerous because if you're not in that medical environment to have that knowledge or to have that training that can cause a communication barrier because not all autistic people or people with ADHD want to be on video camera giving you direct eye contact having to sit still having to not fidget and that again can cause a communication breakdown within the medical society as well as us as the people who are waiting for that assessment it is very overwhelming and overstimulating my me myself waiting for that autism and assessment was very very overwhelming not knowing how to react how to cope how to think how to get my words out and you know it was a very very 
traumatic time for me. I did very much struggle with it. And if it wasn't for my family supporting me and giving me that backup I needed, I probably wouldn't have been able to cope with it as well. Having to meet all these different people along the way, many doctors, the social worker, the psychologist, the mental health link worker. You know, I've had to go through hoops and hoops and hoops trying to get myself help. And if it wasn't for my previous MP, not the one that's in my hometown now, but the previous one, which was Ben Gummer, who was a Conservative MP, he was the one who pushed my referral, pushed for my assessment, because I wrote to him and basically told him I was at my wit's end, I was having heightened anxiety problems, I was starting to self-harm by pulling my own hair out, to the point where I was having ball patches in my head. Uh, luckily now you don't see them, apart from like there's a little bit at the back here that is still scarred, but, you know, I went for a really rough time of feeling really overwhelmed, anxious. I withdrew from society. I withdrew from seeing my friends. I was sleeping in a lot of the day and being up all late at night. And then I was kind of not wanting to do anything out of that social circle. So again, that can cause problems uh, with regards to being social and feeling very, very alone and not understanding why you're feeling different kind of thing. So obviously I want to talk about the authority supporting the National Autism Strategy that's been launched last year until 2026. Again, I will link that down below. It basically is a strategy to talk through about supporting the needs of people with autism, ADHD, and how we need to involve them in employment, how we need to involve them in school, how we need to involve them in local training, especially with mental health professionals, hospitals, local GPs, surgery doctors, local... Uh, physicians and things like that and I think the problem is again there is too much legislation there doesn't seem to be enough involvement with people with autism or ADHD or suspected autism or suspected ADHD who they're involved in this legislation it seems very medical based and very political based and I know that the politicians are trying their best to help us and trying their best to support us but at the same time there's only so much policy you can do there's only so much wording you can put into it there's only so much medical language you can use and it can really overstimulate and cause problems with people with autism and adhd i know from my own background some of the reports that i've read on uk government websites petitions and legal legislation it's like um 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 you know you'll have to try and read through all these big chunks of words and i think if they can make the documents more simplified and easy to be involved in easy to understand that would lessen the anxiety of people with autism and adhd and i think also the uk government needs to make it so that we have easier access to political documents and to politicians and to people who may be the right people for us to communicate with it just seems like there's a communication breakdown on that aspect of things also, with regards to funding, I do think that is an important point to bring up. I think funding is crucial to each area in the UK. I know I can speak from only my perspective from my area of the UK, which is Suffolk. Suffolk has had a lot of funding in the past for ADHD, autism, but unfortunately now it seems that this time around we have missed out on it. And I think that that's going to cause a lot of problems down the line potentially because when you're working on the being in the spectrum or being on the ADHD spectrum and you don't know what to do or how to get yourself through that support or get yourself funding or get into the NHS assessment uh, register, it can take you a long time to figure out, oh, how much is it going to cost me? Am I going to have to go private? How long is this going to take me? Are they going to see me? So, you know, you have to go through that process of funding so the next part that I want to talk about is training, especially like people, they mentioned about the DWP and job centres. Well, I'm going to keep this very brief for this section, but for people like myself who are in touch regularly with the DWP, which is the Department for Work and Pensions and the JCP, which is the Job Centre Plus Network. Um, for people like me who have autism and are a frequent user of their facilities and services, I find that the staff there have not got mo very much knowledge or empathy at all. Like, I feel that the pressure that I've had from them in the past has been absolutely abhorrent. And lately it's got better somewhat. They've referred me to a DEA, which is a disability employment advisor. And my local job coach 
has got a lot better with regards to talking to me and making sure that I'm not overwhelmed and highly anxious and everything. But again, the DWP does not have enough knowledge on autism or ADHD. I found their attitude to disability is completely shocking. And I think that this has been a long time coming. They know that they're meant to do better. They know they're meant to support people better. But unfortunately, they do only have a 10 minute deadline to see everybody. So everyone who goes in June, Monday to Friday and has their appointment is actually well, are you doing this, 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 this? Okay, see you in a fortnight, and then we'll see what you've done then. And it's like, well, hold on a minute, because that doesn't really work that way with people with autism or ADHD or suspected autism and suspected ADHD. That doesn't really work that way. And when you're told that, you know, you've really got 10 minutes to speak to an advisor, that's ridiculous. We need more than a 10-minute appointment. That's just not doable. It's not practical. It's not right. And I think the DWP needs to think again with regards to all disabled people who they see through their doors Monday to Friday and how they experience going into a job centre. My experience of attending the job centre, again, is awful. There's always a lot of foreign men and foreign people outside the entrances, which makes you feel really creeped out when you arrive there and you've got blokes with leather coats on and you've got people who are not kind of national or and i'm not trying to be horrible but it makes you feel really creeped out and not safe and i hate waiting outside the job center and wait for my appointment i just don't like it i think what they need to do is make that uh place more safer um for people with a learning disability and or autism or adhd again they the government tends to put autism adhd as a mental health concern and that again it irritates me because Autism, ADHD are not mental health issues. Autism and ADHD are completely separate diagnoses and should be classed as two separate conditions. But again, autism and ADHD are comorbid. So, you know, it's kind of, I understand why they do class it as mental health issues, but at the same time, we need to realize we are not mentally ill people. We are neurodivergent people. We are neurodiverse people. So again, the terminology needs to change within that side of things as well. Um, I don't like the fact that the NHS puts us under the mental health scope. The MP who launched this debate petition is right. We need a separate classification for autism and ADHD. We are not mentally ill people. And well, the one thing that I got annoyed about with one of the MPs in this debate was that he said about the stereotype is people with autism and ADHD need to be disciplined. That, again, is so wrong. That is so dangerous because, again, people with autism and ADHD do not need to be disciplined. We do not need to be told what to do or to be told off for our behaviours. And it just really irritates me. We are still stuck in this stereotype. We are still stuck in this frightening agenda of going, oh, you just need to be disciplined. You just need to be told what to do. No, no, no. That is just wrong on many levels. However, I know we now we are realising autism and ADHD and accepting it more better. And I know we are getting better with regards to training and services. But again, there is too much of a government target to autism and ADHD services as well, saying, well, you must hit this target by dot 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 date and you must get this target done, this target done, this target done by second time. No, why are we putting targets on vital services? Why can't we just let them get on with the jobs that they were hired and created for rather than going, you must do this by this, 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 or this is going to happen? No, because then you're isolating people, you're risking more people not getting assessments or diagnoses. And the thing is as well, there's no after support either. So this is the thing I have a problem with that. And also they did say that the education system and the NHS is not qualified for purpose because by the end of the day, we need more staff trained in autism and ADHD. We need more staff to be available to refer, to do the assessments, to do the work, the psychological work that needs to be done afterwards. Because again, we are left in limbo. It's like, well, congratulations, you may have autism, you may have ADHD, and then you're left to figure it out by yourself. As soon as I was diagnosed, it was like, congratulations, you're an Aspie, congratulations, you have autism. And then sort of, I'm like, what happens now? There was no aftercare, there was no after service. I was set to research everything by myself and it took a month. I had to go onto YouTube, I went onto Google, I went onto NHS, I went onto 
Mind UK, I went onto many, many websites to try and help myself understand why I was different and why my brain works in a slightly different mindset than the rest of you neurotypical people. And the word neurotypical means normal, just for reference. Um, yeah, it, it's, it really frustrates me that we are still that behind and we are still that uneducated and it just really means that we need to do more to hire staff and again it comes down to funding and that really irritates me because shouldn't the government have a pot of money where we can hire these professionals we can hire people with lived experience such as myself who have autism and say hey okay i am willing to work with you i am willing to help you i want to train you out of my own time and say okay let's sit down together let's train you on a quick session of autism or ADHD and get people with lived experiences involved. This is the thing. It's all good using us as volunteers and soundboards and messengers, but it's about time we got hired too. It's about time we had a pay job saying, okay, we're worth money as well. We give up so much of our time doing free advocacy, free campaigning, free talks, free, you know, Inversing our MPs, our councillors, our advocates, our mental health services, our local hospitals and NHS trusts. That's all good, that's all helpful, but when it comes to us getting employment, that's where it falls short. Because again, a lot of people with autism and ADHD are out of work. And right now, I believe the statistic is 16% of us are in full-time work. That's shocking. That is shockingly awful. That is ridiculously low and needs to change badly. And ASAP, in my opinion, we need to be better supported in the workplace. If we have neurodivergent and neurodiverse people in the workplace, your workplace will boom very, very quickly. It will explode with happiness because having the neurodivergent neurodiverse people in your workplace you'll you'll be better off you'll have loyal people people who are on time people who are work later on into the day people who are less likely to go sick people who will get the job done when they're told to do it you know we need that structure and routine and that trust and that push to go hey i believe in you i will give you a chance because unfortunately employers still are not giving us a chance they're still not trusting us to do a full-time or even part-time job um in the workplace so also um i want to talk about gps and um what the mp said about people with neurodivergence having issues that really really agitated me i'm sorry calling people with autism or suspected autism and suspected adhd as having neurodivergent issues that is so bad, that is so undermining and quite patronising because we don't have issues, we have communication differences which makes us struggle in the world around us because the world doesn't understand or doesn't want us to be around and unfortunately the world is not very friendly towards neurodivergent or neurodiverse people and the NHS again does lack the training um again we are sat we are seen as a problem this is again is due to lack of support a lack of guidance a lack of aftercare services and we are just dropped through the cracks we are left to deal with mental health issues so again that has caused a lot of problems uh with families as well as individuals who are going through the process so to wrap this up and to give my final thoughts on this as an autistic woman I feel that we need to better communicate around autism and ADHD and break the current stereotypes that currently exist in our society. We need to definitely 100% have better assessment time for adults and children and young people suspected of suspected autism and ADHD. Unfortunately, this does fall down to funding and political correctness and the lack of qualified professionals or the employment of people with lived experiences within the workplace. This is due to a lack of understanding and reasonable adjustments that are so vital for so many who need that little bit of extra support or where to get support, so they, which has been mentioned again, which is an 18 months to two years target. That to me is just wrong and we need to be able to get support quicker than this but again it is down to the government, it is down to the NHS and the localities in your area. So we need to also have better explanation on government legislations surrounding autism and ADHD as the neurodivergent world or neurodivergent people around me that I've talked to struggle to understand the political legislation they understand what it means or how they can get involved to make a real difference in their locality and in the world and individuals like myself need a bit of intensive support and to help care for others around us such as our family but we want to live an independent life 
But until I see this action following through to me and other people like myself, it's just more box ticking exercises and more political legislations that seem to go nowhere. I will link the debates down below and the information about it below in the video description. Please like, comment, share and subscribe. I'll be back next time. Bye!